Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Elena and this is House of Elena. If you are a first time viewer, welcome to the family. I do appreciate you stopping by and I hope that you will go to the end of this entire video because I think it is so very important that we have this discussion and I wanted to have a discussion about this for a while and I actually did start it um, talking about the customer service in Trinidad and Tobago but I wanted to expand on it a bit more because I feel that you know it's something that we all talk about but we're not getting a resolution and I realized that there are some things that we actually skipped out and in order for us to really rectify the situation we first have to know where it all started but of course you know I have to remind you all to do this Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Elena Elaine. Thank you for watching. All right, so we are back. And this video, as you saw the title, is why we struggle to give good customer service or great customer service in the Caribbean. Now, um, as some of you all know, I have been in the hospitality industry for a very very long time i started at a very tender age of 19. so i do have a plethora of experiences and of course i believe that i am qualified to talk about uh these topics as it relates to hospitality customer service and expanding to dining room etiquette and so on but i wanted to to focus more on a specific area actually several areas as to why I believe uh, we are struggling with great customer service in the Caribbean so I listed a few and I hope that you go with me to the end of this video and I of course would appreciate your comments below and probably you can tell me what you think as to why we are still struggling with getting great customer service throughout the Caribbean well, so the first one I want to talk about is the slave mentality. We, if we observe, we would notice that there are a lot of black people in the hotel and restaurant industry. And unfortunately, um, we have been trained in a particular way to give service that sometimes come across to a lot of people as you're the slave and the master i'm paying you you have to serve me if you don't serve me well you don't get a tip and it's like sometimes we think we are treated and i can say with my experiences i have dealt with people all over the world and i can tell you the way in terms of how some of those customers would talk to you or treat you you can tell that they think that they are better than you and the manner in which you're you're treated even by your managers it's a very slave mentality sort of um i don't know what to say in terms of the the, the whole mentality of how they treat you and it's really really like a very condescending way in which you are treated and uh, there is a lot of even favoritism and colorism in the hospitality industry and i'll give you this experience right because <laughs> you know i always have an experience <laughs> so so as i said i started in the hotel industry at a very young age so i started off in the banqueting department and i was you know re i was a star um silver i was a really good silver so anyway um the hotel was expanding and they were looking for the best of the banquet servers to transfer into the fine dining restaurant and of course i was chosen so there was this supervisor at the time she i would say that she was one of my early mentors in the industry and she was really nice and she was really helpful and she really did mentor me and coach me and all of that so anyway so there was a lounge area before you actually so when you walk into the hotel there's this big lounge area there's a lobby then the lounge then you can go into the the dining room right so i noticed that only a certain 
type of girls were allowed to work in the lounge area right so they weren't dark skinned like myself and um so the supervisor she's like you know alena i want to put you out in the lounge area you do great you know you know you have that winning smile you have that personality you're gonna make good tips and stuff and i was like yeah i'm so excited i can't wait so she put me in the in the lounge area and uh, the general manager by the way who was not a local um passed by and he saw me and he went to her and said what is that girl doing in the front and she's like well i put her there to to work and he's like you need to remove her and uh, she's like but why and she he's like you need to you need to remove her you know i don't want her there and she came to me and she said um alena um i have to put you back in the dining room i didn't ask any questions and she's like don't worry about it it's uh, some people are the way they are and uh, i picked up on that and it's later my colleagues would say like you know, you you <laughs> you didn't stand a chance staying in that laundry area he only liked light skinned girls working in the laundry area and i was like oh okay i see so <laughs> there is this slave mentality in the sense that you know back in the, in slavery times the field negroes or the blacks the dark skin would work in the fields and the light skin in the house and there was a separation believe it or not uh with respect to that so i think sometimes what it does it builds a resentment because if you think that you're really good and you have what it takes to be an excellent silver and then you're being discriminated against you're like why bother and you just kind of don't have that enthusiasm to continue in the hospitality hospitality in the way that you should all right um the other one i want to talk about is preference is actually shown to have foreign managers in the top positions now if you're working in a hotel that is a chain international hotel none of the hotels i know that are chain hotels have um a local general manager all the managers are foreigners and we in trinidad and tobago we have so many capable um uh efficient uh people who can actually hold that position but it's never given to them for whatever reason i don't know if it's because that is something the big chain hotels decide to do but there's never i have never in my entire career in the hotel industry uh seen a manager that a, a, a general manager who runs the entire hotel who is a local they always come from the uk they come from um other european countries they come from north america but they are never locals and i think too that kind of rubs um locals who as i said who are very capable of actually doing the job it's a very ugly world out there <laughs> so you know it's, it's something that we kind of let go over our head and we actually don't pay attention to these things but i believe seriously that it affects the way in which we um we perform because if we have a local uh general manager who probably understands the culture who knows um the people better can interact differently as opposed to most of uh if, if not all the general managers tend to be very aloof and they've they it's you can there's a huge demarcation in you are the server you serve me i am the general manager there isn't a, a camaraderie there isn't a family type way and of course you can disagree with me and you can say it in the comments and let me know if you think differently right um the other 
aspect of this is um, lack of interest in employees. Now, <laughs> yes, there is a lack of interest and this doesn't just go for the hotel and tourism or restaurant industry, but sometimes it's all across um, different um, sectors. But I'm just paying attention to the hospitality and service industry in that aspect. Many times there isn't a lot of interest in the employees from upper management, right? Um, upper management know very little about their employees. They can't tell you what the employees like, what they do, what um, uh, personal challenges that they may be facing. And sometimes when an employee sees that, you know, they're not being shown a genuine interest by their superiors, it tends to uh, separate them and whatever issue that employee may have they don't share it with the employer and what it does it filters into the manner in which they deliver service all right because in their minds it's like you don't care about me you're just using me and I'll get to some other points later on as to why I'm saying that but it really does have a negative psychological effect on employees when top senior managers don't show a genuine interest in employees. And you find this often happening in very large um, chain hotels or five-star restaurants. There is very little interest in the employees, right? Um, the fourth one I wanna talk about is um, the hospitality industry is sometimes seen as a hustle, uh, a hustle and struggling <laughs> job to get into. So it's not seen like you can actually make a career out of it. And a lot of times people as well have this mentality that silvers are not real, uh, it's not a real career per se. But that is so untrue because you can actually even as a silver can make it a career there are persons who are working in the hotel industry for for decades and they they're not seen as this is their career it's still seen as a job but what i would also add to that is persons who are in those fields should also also try to uh do courses do things to elevate their status and when I say status even if you're in that same department whether housekeeping whether you're a cook whether you're um, a sous chef whether you're a silver whether you're um, a maitre d anything like that you should always try to do courses to elevate yourself because especially what I've noticed in Trinidad and Tobago is that people don't see silvers as a real career they just see it as you're, you're just doing this menial job and um, you know if your service is not good I'm not going to tip you and there's a very condescending way in which customers treat with um, workers in that field and they don't realize how much the hospitality, hospitality industry is so needed and you know it actually boosts the economy and it boosts tourism and in Trinidad, unfortunately, we are bombarded with horrible service. And it's not because people are not um, sometimes in, invested in it or love the industry. But after a while, it starts to look like a hustle and struggling um, job to be in. Sometimes people just take up the job, but it's not what they really want to do. So they they'll do that as a part-time job. So it's just to get by. And therefore they don't actually show that, that enthusiasm or actually trying to put their best foot forward to give great service. You know, I don't want to go into talking about um, you need to smile you need to have a, a certain tone in your voice i don't need to say that i think people who are in the industry knows that but it kind of gets annoying when you're being told to smile and to have a certain demeanor and in actuality you're treated as a nobody 
and I, I can testify to this because this is the experiences that I would have encountered. Not everybody, of course, but most persons see restaurant servers as nobodies. All right. So the next one, and I think this is number four I'm on to, <laughs> is the upbringing of individuals. All right. So, um, so my grandmother would always tell us, you know, when you do something, you do it to your best. You know, I remember when we had all these functions, these banquets uh, to do, and we have, I am telling you, sometimes hundreds of teacups, hundreds of cutleries to strap, hundreds of glasses to strap. And even doing that, I would put, you know, my best foot forward to strap the cutleries properly, to strap the glasses properly. When you lay your table, how you lay it down not just anyhow as we would say but you know sometimes when people just don't have that certain upbringing it's like where's all this fuss about just traffic country just you know and they just do it anyhow substandard as they would say and just carry on and i think it has to do with sometimes your upbringing because if you have the upbringing that you always put your best foot forward because you can just you can never tell who is looking at you you can never tell how far you can be or come or go right um if you do things you never know sometimes the best servers end up getting great opportunities to actually go to a different country and work where they're getting more money you know so you know sometimes we just need to do some introspection and some evaluation of who we are you know and it's not about what you do and but it's how you do it and i think you know you have to be you have to start appreciating the field that you're in to be appreciated by others yeah and even if you don't feel that you're being appreciated by others you know who you are you know what you give you know at the end of the day you are putting everything in you and uh, you know it, it's just unfortunate that many times you, you're not seen especially if you're working in a very large chain hotel you're hardly ever seen for your good work so i think that has a lot to do with it right um the other one i would say number five is that some persons just do not have the personality to be in the service industry and that is okay some of us are introverted and we don't like people so it's not good that you know you don't like people but you're in the industry but it goes back to my not my last point in which i was saying that it's seen as a a struggle and hustle mentality that is what it is so listen i don't really like the job but i need it because i need to get some things or i need to pay for my school tuition but it's not really my personality and that is why we have all these complaints where people are talking about you know in terms of how they're being interacted with by the uh by the servers you know they're not smiling they're not very engaging things like that and it really does stifle the industry and i think that is why we are still struggling to really have the best or give great service in the caribbean because it's not just in trinidad and tobago but it extends to the wider caribbean now having said that i would also say that um my experience in working in the british virgin island i shouldn't say working but i was training in the british virgin island and there is um they they they're a bit better in terms of the way they serve simply because those countries depend a lot on tourism all right to to keep their economy going right so they, they their economy sometimes is about 80 sometimes 90 percent um depending on tourism to boost their economy and to bring of course revenue into their country so they take um hospitality sometimes at a, a, a different level and you know once again it goes back to my first point which is that 
slave mentality because you would find a lot of persons from Europe and North America, they will gravitate towards those smaller islands and they think that, you know, they need to be treated a certain way. And, you know, it's just sometimes the treatment that is meted out to servers, it's, it's really the pits, yeah? All right, so um, let me see. I have some points. Right, so I want to talk about this, right? So, you know, I noticed like even in the 90s, I think they improved a bit. But when you look at brochures, you look at magazines, you look at television ads, you look at all the social media ads, they will only portray the black person doing the menial jobs. All right, so there is all the white persons who are having a great time in the resort and then when you look at um the servers they are black people so it comes like goes back again to my first point where you know like it's like slavery isn't really over and i don't know if hotels recognize this i don't know if they 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 it's a conscious thing that they do that if you go back especially in all those brochures and all those five-star um resorts and hotels you always see the servers black and the persons who are having a great time are caucasians and uh, I will put up some pictures for you all to see what I'm talking about. I got these pictures from Vintage Caribbean. Uh, it's a site that I follow on Instagram and they talk about different um, issues as it relates to um, the black race and they highlight a lot of issues from slavery to present day issues that black people continue to encounter and one of the things that they highlighted was the fact that these brochures these magazines um these television ads continue to run these commercials where it's the black people are the subservient and the white people are having a great time now i would come back home to trinidad and tobago where even with our carnival right um for a very long time it, it has been being betrayed that carnival is really only for a certain class of people and i say this because when foreigners come to trinidad they actually see that we are a, a caribbean island that has black people <laughs> it may sound crazy but it is true all these ads especially for carnival they portray the woman to only be of a certain race or a certain complexion right and you may see a pop of one one dark one dark skin person as we say a darky <laughs> right one dark skin person you know in a in a carnival costume but they have been portraying trinidad and tobago as if you know we only have a certain race even the the big billboards that you will see sometimes only portray a certain race or certain um, complexion right um, in these costumes and this is why we can't really get uh, the, the great service that we want in the Caribbean because if we always continue to see that the dark-skinned people or black people are the ones to be the servers then we spinning it up in mud and then those same persons who actually show the biasness they will go and travel and they will come back and say i don't know why trinidad can't be like this place or that country i went there and the service was great and everything but sometimes these places may invest or may not invest or simply because these people are very hungry and when i say hungry meaning they know that their country depends on tourism they don't have a choice all right but it doesn't mean that they don't have these grievances or they don't feel some measure of resentment and it happened to me because after a while you're just being overlooked 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 all the time 
and yes i did have a senior position in the hotel industry but you know it didn't come easy and there was a lot of hurdles that i had to jump over and cross before i could actually get to that point so you know it's like i don't want people to say oh you're pulling the race card it's not that it is a fact it is actual it is reality right and this is things that we need to address we need to start seeing people we need to start seeing servers as real people who have a uh, talent who has gifts who have the ability to do great things in the industry but if they continue to be overlooked then in their mind it's like what's the use and that is why i said in my last video talking about customer service when i went to hotel school i graduated with a big class it was probably over 150 of us right and out of that 150 if you think you find 10 persons still in the industry you find a lot because all of us myself included found that after a while you're being exploited right and um, that exploitation i will talk about it even uh, more in my next uh in my next uh topic all right so the other uh reason and i'll come back to home is that we got everything here relatively easy all right so we are known to have oil and gas for a very long time trinidad and tobago um is has been seen or probably still is seen as one of the more wealthier caribbean countries and when we got our independence right um dr eric williams our first prime minister he gave us everything so we had free schooling we had free um health care everything was given to us very easy and so you find trinidadians making statements as i am not a slave i don't want to do that and it's again because they see this as a slave job so once you're working in the hotel industry you're a restaurant server you work in housekeeping you're a cook it's like <laughs> i don't do that okay <laughs> excuse me so these these are the things that happens and a lot of times people just don't think that it is having a negative effect on the service that is rendered here because when people i mean when you realize that you're seen as nobody why do i need to give my all in an industry where i am seen as as nothing i'm being overlooked all the time and it's because sometimes we have gotten everything so easy that we don't even want to work we don't want to put in the extra we don't want to give of our best because you know as they've been saying for a very long time we have oil and gas so you know tourism is not really for us it's for those smaller islands and these are the kind of things that people say and it really does affect why we are still struggling to give great service in the caribbean all right so i want to talk about let me see i have people's right so another aspect i want to talk about why we are struggling to give great service in the caribbean is because um people's personal problems outweigh wanting to give good service all right so i would have talked about it in my first video and uh, you know a couple people did not agree with me but i can say that when there are employees who have serious personal problems domestic issues it is very difficult to come to work and smile and give of your best some persons are really good at it i was one of them all right who can just like separate it and come to work and smile and give the best service and that's how was your meal and can i offer you the best wine blah 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 oh. 
<laughs> right? I I could have I could probably do that. All right, but a lot of persons they can't. They just don't have the ability. Plus, if they don't have the personality for hospitality, well then, that's it. All right. So, and again, coupled with the employers actually not showing genuine interest in the employees. So it's like it's like a cesspool. <laughs> that is the best way I can say it. And we have to find ways in which we can now improve the customer service it's not too late for some reason i still have hope that we can you know lift that banner and we can give the best service that we can give and really really try to put trinidad and tobago on the map as one of the best countries where you get the best service no matter where you go yeah all right so number 10 i want to talk about is exploitation I would have mentioned it earlier, but I want to just expound on it further with exploitation. I cannot begin to tell you how many times I felt exploited in this industry. I am telling you, all those hours I worked with not being paid over time, um, with my gifts, my talents being used and not being compensated for it. These are things that turns people away from the industry. These are things that turn people away from wanting to really give their best. Because after a while, when you realize you, 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 sometimes you meet such great cooks, great chefs, great servers in the restaurant, great people in housekeeping that when they make a bed, it's like, whoa. When they finish cleaning a room, it's like, whoa. It's like, wow. It's like, you know, it's, they are not seen as they are talented. It's just seen as a job. They're just seen like, okay, well, clean the room and that is it. You know, you don't need to, I don't want to hear anything else. You just need to clean the room and it needs to be a certain standard, right? And when they get people to the standard that they want, they don't treat them well. They don't treat them well. It is a fact. They don't treat them well, you know? So it's like, damn if you do, damn if you don't. You do well, you're not compensated. You don't do well, you don't get a bonus, you don't get incentive, you know, you get a poor performance appraisal. And it's like, oh. So these are the things I have observed and which I believe is why we are still struggling. When people realize that they're being exploited and they're not being appreciated, they're not going to give up their best. Yeah. So leave your comment below. I appreciate you. If you stayed all the way to the end and watched this entire video, but I think it was a discussion that is needed. And I really would appreciate if you'll say something below. Of course, give my video a thumbs up. Please share, please like, and hmm, yeah, I think that is it. <laughs> so I will see you guys next time. I appreciate you all. Of course.